Hello, my name is Christiana Visk and I'm the archivist at the Horniman Museum and Gardens. If you're listening to this video, you're probably about to start your research or maybe you're in the middle of your research and feel kind of stuck in the process. Either way, I'm here to equip you with basic research strategies so that you feel more confident about researching online. Let's get started. In today's tutorial, we will learn what a database is, the difference between a museum collection and an archive collection, basic research tricks, including how to create a keywords list and how to use filters, how to narrow or broaden search results using Boolean operators, quotation marks, and wildcards, and how to search collections on the Horniman's website. First things first, what is a database? Think of a database as an online library. Each item in this library has information on what it is, where it's from, what it's used for, and how to find it. Some examples of databases that you might be more familiar with include Netflix, which is like a library of television shows and films, or perhaps your local library's online catalog, where you can find information and all the resources in the library, such as books, DVDs, journals, cookbooks, and kid books, anything you name it. And the library catalog will usually tell you where to find that item in the library and if it's available for borrowing. So, how do museum collections and archives use a database? A museum collection database will keep track of all the objects within a museum, both the objects displayed at the physical site as well as the objects kept safely in storage. For example, the Horniman Museum is known for its anthropology, natural history, and musical instruments collections, so you will most likely find cultural objects, instruments, or taxidermy on display. Each object will have its own accession number. In other words, a code specifically used to locate that object in the database. Once we find that object in the database, we can learn more information about it, like where it's from, its purpose and use, and when it was collected. Later on, I will show you how to explore the Horniman's online collections for museum objects. An archive database functions the same as a museum collection database, but the actual items in an archive are different. In an archive, you will find records, manuscripts, blueprints of a museum building, photographs, film negatives, pamphlets, basically anything that is not an object. These records will have supporting evidence or written information of a museum object. Some examples include an object's receipt if it was purchased, a letter between the donor and the museum, or an annual report stating the museum's activities for a given year. So how do the two work together? When you are searching through a museum collection, you will find objects. And if proper research has been conducted for that object, you can get that object's basic information, like what it is and where it's from. In an archive, you will find records or supporting evidence about the museum object. Like I mentioned previously, this could be a purchase receipt or a letter between the donor and the museum, or even some notes written by the collectors when it was first collected. With both the physical object and the records about the object, you get a bigger picture of the object's background and origin. So now that we know what is in a database, we can now move on to how to search through the database. Um, before we begin, I want to clarify that each database is different from one another. But for the most part, if you master these research strategies, you will be able to apply all of them to any database. First, begin your search with four to five keywords related to your object or topic. Why do you need to do this? Firstly, there can be many words to describe one thing. For example, let's say I am interested in exercises I can do with my dog. My main keyword would be the word dog. But let's say the academic literature refers to dogs as canines. Or maybe another person might use the word puppy instead of dog. To make sure all my options are included, I can write down dog, canine, and puppy as my keywords. I would also include the word exercise in my search, since I'm looking for exercises I can do with my dog. But I also can include physical activity, which is another word for exercise. Secondly, what I'm looking for might have two or three prominent words to describe it. 
For example, let's say I'm looking up a special piece of clothing used during a religious ceremony. From that example alone, there are three main words I could potentially use. Clothing, ceremony, and religious. Still don't know where to start with keywords? Here are some questions you can ask yourself that might help. What is the name of the object you want to research? Are there different names for that object? If I'm looking for clothing, maybe I can use other words like garments or textiles. And if I know the specific article of clothing, I can also indicate that. I can say something like shawl, dress, or shoes. Where is the object from? What's the object made of? How is it used? Is it used for entertainment, religious purposes, or leisure? Is there a person associated with the object? Try using their name as one of their keywords. Next, we're going to learn how to use filters. There's so much information out there, and filters help users weed out the information they don't need and keep the information they do need. Filters are options that are pre-selected by collection creators. This can include the region the object is from, the year the object was collected, whether or not the object is displayed at the museum, etc., etc. The more filters you use, the more narrow your search results will be. And the less filters you use, the broader your search results will be. It all depends on what you're looking for. For this exercise, I will review the filters used in the Horniman's Explore the Collections page. Okay, let's get started. Let me share my screen right now for an example search of the Horniman's online museum collections. Let's look at the Horniman website to try out our new research strategies. In your internet browser, type in horniman.ac.uk. On the top right, click on Explore the Collections. When you reach the Explore the Collections page, locate the search bar. To the right of the search bar, you will see a button that says Filter. Click on that. Starting from the left, you will get the following options, anthropology, natural history, musical instruments, archives, handling, and living. For this case, let's click on anthropology, since we want to look at the museum objects related to Nigeria and Kenya. Because we want to look at objects for this exercise, I will just click on objects. However, if you are interested in subjects, places, and people, please feel free to include that in your search. For the show only section, I will click on objects with images. Since we are online, it might be easier to see the objects with images, but again, if you want to see all your options, please feel free to include this in your search. Lastly, since Nigeria and Kenya are both in Africa, we can choose Africa as the continent we want to search. Now that we've picked out all our filters, let's begin the search. So the keywords I will use for the object I'm looking for are Nigeria, figure, bronze or copper, and um, maybe even statue. So in this next step, I'm going to introduce our final research strategy called a Boolean search. In a Boolean search, I will use the operators and, or, and not to combine my different keywords together to produce different results. And will narrow your results because it will consider both these words. Or will broaden your results meaning it will look up both this word and this word. Remember, think or means more. Not will narrow your results by avoiding unwanted terms. We normally don't use a not unless we want to distinguish between two similar things. For example, let's say you want to look up a trumpet, but every time you look up a trumpet, you get just as many examples for a trombone. In this case, you could write trumpet, not trombone and the results should only show trumpets. In addition to Boolean operators, you can use search modifiers or characters to help narrow or broaden your search. For example, quotation marks will search for the exact phrase in quotation marks. This is used for phrases and or objects that have more than two words. For example, if you type in university students without the quotations, you will get results ranging from just university to just students and or sometimes both university and students. Adding the quotations 
guarantees the specific phrase university students. I've included another example if you want to pause the video and read more about it. But for now, let's crack on to our wildcards. Wildcards will help you consider all spelling variables of a word by substituting a symbol for one letter of the word. For this example, we will use a question mark as our wildcard symbol. Some databases will accept other characters like an exclamation point or a hash as wildcards. I have provided two examples of a wildcard. The first example shows W O M question mark N. By putting the question mark between the M and the N, the search engine will account for results with the word woman or woman. In my second example, I put a question mark in between the second O and the R. By putting a question mark in the middle of the O and the R, the search engine will account for the English speaking preferred spelling of color and the United States preferred spelling of color. The last wild card I want to show you is called a truncation. Use a truncation when you want to search for variable endings of a root word. For example, let's say you want to look up plants, but you also aren't sure if planting is a better word or maybe planter. So by adding the asterisk after the T in plant, the search engine will show up all the results with the root word plant and consider plants, planting, planter, and plant. Maybe even planetarium. Plant is the root word after all. Now back to our search. I'm going to use Boolean operators with my first two keywords, Nigeria and figure. I am looking for a figure or figurine as my object and I specifically want it associated with Nigeria. My search results will pull up all objects that are considered both associated with Nigeria and a figure. By using and, I'm being very specific about my search. Therefore, using and means I narrowed my results. Here are my results. Now let's type in Nigeria or figure. That means my search results will pull up everything that is associated with Nigeria as well as other objects considered as figures. By using or, I have broadened my results. When we start going down this page, we will find objects that are figures, but not related to Nigeria. And on page 10, we will find toy cars that are from Nigeria, but not related to figures. See how that broadened my results? Just a small disclaimer. The Horniman just launched their website a couple of months ago, so some errors might still occur when searching. For example, when I made this tutorial, there wasn't access to our archive collection. But fear not, the website will be up and running as soon as possible. And the research tricks I taught you in this video can apply for any type of search engine, not just the Hornemans. You can use these research tricks in Google, journal article databases, and any other museum or archive database. Give it a try! Last but not least, let's review how to read the object's information. This number right here is called the museum number or the accession number. It's the unique identifier that helps our curators and staff locate that object's information in our database. As you can see on this right-hand column, you can find information about the object, including where it's from, who made it, and the material it's made out of. Underneath the photo, you will find a more elaborate description of that object. If you are interested in this object and have questions about it, please feel free to email inquiry at horniman.ac.uk and they will refer your email to the appropriate staff member. If possible, include the accession number and the title of the object. And if you are interested in saving the image, right click the image and press save image. Remember, if you use any of the Horniman's photos in future research projects, you will need to cite the Horniman Museum and Gardens. If you would like a bigger image of the photo, you will need to request that image from the Horniman Museum and Gardens. Let's review what we learned today. Think of a database as a library. When you search a museum database, 
you will get information about their objects. When you search an archives database, you will get records and or supporting evidence or information about the objects. When you begin your search, think of four to five keywords and remember to use filters to help narrow or broaden your search. And lastly, use Boolean search operators, quotations and wildcards to narrow or broaden your search. Now that you have learned new research strategies, we invite you to explore our collections online. On this slide, you can find the links to our online collections, the presentation video, which is found on the Horniman Museum and Gardens YouTube channel, and the presentation slides, which can be found on SlideShare. If you have any further questions about research strategies, please feel free to contact me. I know you all will do a fantastic job when you research. Good luck and happy researching. Bye.